Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f inverse of x equals 4 times f inverse of x minus 1 all over x plus 1. And we're going to evaluate f of 3. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to solve for f inverse. Since we're given an equation, we can go ahead and cross multiply here, multiply these two things, right? This one and that one, and that's going to equal 4 times f inverse of x minus 1. So x plus 1 multiplied by f inverse of x equals 4 times f inverse of x minus 1. And then we can go ahead and put this on the right hand side and put the negative one on the left hand side. So it's going to be 1 equals 4 f inverse of x minus x plus 1 f inverse of x. And then we can factor out f inverse. But before we proceed with the solution, take a look at what Wolfram Alpha gave me when I tried to use it to solve this problem. I don't know if my prompt is good enough. Is there another way to do it? But result is false. Are you serious? There's a result which we're going to find out in a little bit. In the sense, I, I'm going to say at this point, human beings are still better than AI. Even though there's a big hype about it, they're still not there yet. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take out F inverse. And that's going to give us 4 minus X minus 1 equals 1. And we can go ahead and solve for F inverse. F inverse of X is going to be 1 over... Remember from here we get 3 minus x and that's going to be f inverse. Now, obviously this is f inverse and you want to find f. What can you do? You can invert this one more time. Because what is f inverse inverse or what is the inverse of f inverse? f itself, right? So we can go ahead and invert both sides and that involves setting this equal to y and then solving for x. Let's go ahead and do it. 3 minus x times y equals 1. 3y minus xy equals 1. And our goal is to solve for x because that's going to give us xy equals, let's see, 3y minus 1. x equals 3y minus 1 over y. Now, since we flipped the x and y, now notice that in this case, f inverse of x is y. So f of y is going to be x, right? So this is f of y which means, and I'm trying to find, notice that I'm trying to solve for f of 3. So to find f of 3, all you have to do is, and not get confused by x and y because they switched roles, is to replace y with 3, 3 times 3 minus 1 over 3. That's 9 minus 1, which is 8 thirds. Make sense? So that will be the answer. And that brings us to the end of the first method, not to the end of the video yet. Okay, so stick around. Second method, let's rewrite the problem. We have f inverse of x equals 4 times f inverse of x minus 1 over x plus 1. And our goal is to evaluate f of 3. I mean, if it asks for f of x, obviously we could find it too. Notice here we found f of y and replaced y with x. Now you might be questioning, like, isn't this x? That's a different x. Every time we use the x and throw it away and get a new x, okay? So don't, don't get stuck on that one. Now, to find f of 3, I'm going to use the idea of inverse functions. I'm going to set f of 3 equal to t. Because since I'm trying to find f of 3, so doesn't it make sense to set it equal to a variable because it's unknown? And then from here, by using the hocus pocus property, I mean the inverse function property, f inverse is going to map t to 3 because f maps 3 to t. So if you think about the inverse function or kind of like a pre-image, whatever, you're going to take the 3 to t, like map it to t through f, and f inverse is just going to do the opposite. Make sense? This is going to be f inverse, which is mapping t to 3. That's why f inverse of t is 3. Make sense? Great. This is going to be helpful. So to get to that, since we have f inverse of x, what does that mean? That means replace x with t everywhere. That gives you f inverse of t equals 4 times f inverse of t minus 1 over, remember x is re being replaced, replaced by t, 
so you get t plus 1. So you might be kind of wondering, like, isn't this more complicated? Like, there are two variables. There seem to be two variables, but actually that's not the case because we know what f inverse t is, right? That is equal to 3. So this is a 3, and that's a 3. Make sense? So we get the following. 3 equals 12 minus 1 over t plus 1. And then 3t plus 3 is equal to 11. 3t is equal to 8. t is equal to 8 thirds. But what is t? t is f of 3, which is what we were trying to find. And we actually found it, right? So the answer is 8 thirds as before. So too bad Wolfram Alpha can't solve this problem, but human beings can. So we are better. Okay? Great. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.